Each new day brings new challenges, but AARP only sees possibilities. We're tackling the concerns of our communities and supporting the kind of change that can benefit all of us. Take on today with AARP. Learn how at aarp.org slash sd. Are you waking up an instant millionaire this morning? We have results from last night's Mega Millions drawing, and we'll look ahead to tonight's Powerball drawing. Plus, how states in the region are preparing for the potential for violence ahead of President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. Good morning. This is Kello Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your weekend. We also have your boredom blisters coming up, but first, our top story. Efforts to put out a massive grass fire near Lemon, South Dakota, are now shifting into mop-up mode. Strong winds spread the fire, which is estimated at 20,000 acres, fanning out over a 20-mile area through 19 farms and ranches. The fire started Thursday. Firefighters from nearly two dozen surrounding communities came to help. Crews were out last night looking for hot spots, especially in wooded areas like shelter belts. You certainly don't want those embers to, to go into some fresh vegetation and, and ignite uh, a new fire. Uh, so they're looking at that, they're mopping up um, haystacks, hay bales, you know, all sorts of things that, that you got to keep an eye on. Otherwise, uh, if it breaks out, you, you've got a major problem. Some ranchers west and southeast of Lemon were told to prepare to evacuate from the fire. The Lemon Chamber of Commerce is organizing help for those impacted by the fire. You can find out more information on how you can help at this story at Cullerland.com. Well, many state capitals are bracing for potential violence ahead of next week's inauguration day following last week's assault on the U.S. Capitol. South Dakota authorities are not discussing security measures taking place at the Capitol and Pier, but the U.S. Postal Service is closing some post offices early. They're also temporarily removing three blue mail collection boxes near the Capitol. Across the border in Iowa, authorities are boarding up judicial buildings and historic courthouses in Des Moines. And in Minnesota, officials have been preparing by adding extra security near the Capitol and putting up fencing. Governor Tim Walz is also calling on the National Guard. I can assure Minnesotans the preparation is, um, is as professional as you can get. The coordination is, uh, is happening. The emergency operations centers are open and coordinating together. And the force structure that the professionals have advised and asked for is being put into place. A pro-Trump Christian group known as the Jericho March has a permit to gather and pray at the South Dakota Capitol Rotunda on Sunday. The group has been gathering peacefully every Sunday since December. Well, let's get our first look at the forecast now with meteorologist Adam Root in the Storm Center. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Perry, and good morning, everybody. We're off to a cloudy start to the day, especially East River, and we don't get a whole lot of improvement in the afternoon. 23 as we take a look downtown with a northwest wind at 15 miles per hour, and you see that gray sky above. That's not going anywhere. So while, yes, we're already in the 20s, keep in mind our average low is 7. We're not going to see much improvement on the thermometer today. 20 at the Capitol, 24 in Aberdeen, 38 though in Rapid City, 18 Valentine and Winter Chamberlain sitting at 21 along with Sisseton, 19 for Watertown as well as Ortonville in southwestern Minnesota. But you factor in that wind and we have wind chills in the teens and single digits East River. Plan accordingly as you go about the start of your day. But out west, while yes, it is warmer, it's also windy. We still have that wind chill technically in the 20s and upper teens. There is the cloud cover and it's not going anywhere today. A very gray afternoon on the way, especially East River, which will in turn keep temperatures very much in check. West River, though, a few bits of moisture trying to make their presence known. But beyond that, they at least get in on a little more sunshine today. At least we don't have any organized moisture to talk about yet. We'll have the seven day forecast coming up in just a bit. All right, thank you very much, Adam. Well, no one matched all six numbers in last night's big Mega Millions drawing worth $750 million. That means Tuesday night's drawing will be worth an estimated $850 million, the third largest jackpot of all time. But your chances of winning are just one in more than $300 million. But despite those long odds, the potential for a big payoff drew players to Sioux Falls stores on Friday, despite the bad weather, hoping they'd purchase the winning ticket. Just the energy is great. Um, everyone's so excited and hopeful, which honestly is um, amazing. Whether you know it's um, whether it's for themselves or for others, 
because that much money can do a lot of good for a person, but also for um, everyone else as well. We met a Sioux Falls woman who said she doesn't care if she wins or not, just so long as someone walks away with the money so she no longer has to keep purchasing tickets. Well, now all players' eyes will be on the $640 million prize at stake in tonight's Powerball drawing. Well, shop for bargains while supporting family-owned businesses during winter crazy days in downtown Sioux Falls. Shops and restaurants are offering discounts and specials throughout the day. Some shops are slashing prices 50 to 70 percent to make way for their spring merchandise. Saturday City is a craft and vendor show featuring vintage jewelry, homemade crafts, and sweet treats from 10 to 4 at Liberty Hall, the former VFW building on South Minnesota Avenue. Admission is free. The Sioux Falls Sports Card Show features new and vintage cards plus memorabilia for sale at the South Dakota Military Heritage Alliance building on West Russell Street. The hours are from 9 to 3. Admission is free. The Midco Aquatic Center is offering a New Year, New You Bingo Challenge. Throughout the month of January, swimmers can take part in fitness activities for a chance to win weekly bingo prizes. The cost is an active swim pass or a daily admission. Great Bear Ski Valley in Sioux Falls is back open for skiing, snowboarding, and tubing after being closed Thursday and Friday by the weather. Today's hours are from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. The Winter Wonderland Holiday Light Display at Falls Park has been extended to run nightly through January 31st. The hours are from 5 to midnight. Adam? Overall, the day planner isn't terrible, but it does feature a lot of cloud cover for those of you along and east of the Missouri River to the west. We do get in on a little more sunshine, which will in turn help that temperature kick up a little bit. So these 20s are generally in place for areas along and east of I-29. To the west, we'll get into the 40s. So a lot better in terms of uh, what we see on the thermometer. But that's what we have right now. Look at all that cloud cover along and east of the Missouri River with that little trough making its way through. A few little flurries trying to make their presence known, but little if any of that is actually making its way to the ground. So it's going to be a pretty quiet day today, at least on radar. However, it is going to be a little bit windy West River, East River not so much. So kind of a give and take there. You don't have the wind, but you have the cloud cover East River. You don't have the cloud cover, but you have the wind to the West. Take your pick. Either way, we stay dry as we head through the night and into the day on Sunday. But by Sunday evening, though, we have a little clipper that's going to move through, giving us a few rain and snow showers at first in western parts of Killowan, but then those snow chances migrate to the east as we go into the day on Monday. Now, we're not looking at too much in the way of snowfall, but at least an inch in several areas. This is the risk of at least an inch or more of snow. Not so much to the east, but you notice out in western parts of Killowan, this could at least be a disruptive system as you get ready to start the work and school week. So we'll keep an eye on this as we head through the weekend and even into the start of your next work and school week. So just keep that in the back of your mind. We are going to be watching that potential for at least a little bit of snow. We're also going to watch temperatures remain well above average for this time of year through Tuesday and into Wednesday. But watch what happens as we go toward the end of the week. A cold front moves through and cooler temperatures start to plunge down into Kelloland by Friday going into Saturday. For the day today, however, we're near average along and east of I-29, but that's mainly due to the cloud cover. So 20s there, 30s a little west of that. West River, though, more sunshine, more wind, but you do get into the 40s. Overnight lows tonight in the upper teens to mid-20s under partly to mostly cloudy skies, especially East River, a little bit clearer to the west. And then we get in on a generally breezy day across the board on Sunday. 30s to the east, again 40s to the west, but low to mid 40s at that. Your seven day forecast does feature that chance for some snow Monday, even a few snow showers not out of the question on Tuesday. And while we peak on Wednesday with a high of 42, we cut that in half by the end of the work and school week. That's a look at your forecast. Have a great day, everybody. For more local news, weather, and sports information, you can always head on over to Kelloland.com.